Dude, I'm just going to say it. Has there ever been a city in the United States luckier than Orlando, Florida? It's a swamp. We were there for a week. Every single day that we were there, it was 36 to 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, thunderstorms for an hour in the afternoon. And the, the quote-unquote trademark real feel was 45 degrees Celsius. 99% humidity. Uh, everybody outside is sweating. Their, their shirts and pants completely changed color. They were, they were dying. But Disney World came in and saved them. They almost built in New Orleans, and then all the government officials were like, how about a bribe? How about a bribe? And Walt Disney said, suck it. I'm going to Orlando. And single-handedly saved the city from irrelevancy. Universal came in. SeaWorld came in. They were, they were blessed by an archangel from above. I want to give you my Orlando experience, okay? The... The, the parks, every, obviously it's a bubble of like manufactured happiness. And that was very pleasant. People call you, sir. Hi, friends. I uh, hope you're having a great day. Wow, nice shirt, et cetera, et cetera. The only time we were in real Orlando was the Uber drive from the airport and the Uber drive to the airport. You might say how much could go wrong. The Uber drive from the airport to the hotel, dude arrived, no front bumper, on the Uber, the entire time the dude was driving, he was driving with one hand, eating pistachios with his other hand, and then tailgating like less than a meter away from every car in front of him. He never used his signal light, except one time he used his signal light and then he left it on for like five minutes straight. And I swear to you, we, we drove past a sign that said like, welcome to Disney World. And we were going like, you know, 60 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour. He was like, do you guys want to stop real quick and get a picture? Like, we're on the, the freeway, dog. What do you mean you want to stop and get a picture? We were like, ha, 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 that's okay. Got out of the car. I said, it was the craziest Uber drive I've ever had in my life. It's me, my wife, my two-year-old daughter, and my 11 and eight-year-old niece. I'm like, we're about to be on the news for like, a, you know, a horrific accident or something. Uber drive to the airport a week later. Dude shows up in a van, very nice, puts our luggage in the back. Everybody gets in, we strap in the car seat, we put our, our daughter in the car seat. He puts on Alvin and the Chipmunks, the, the squeak wool on the DVD player in the back. Everything was great. He drove very pleasant to the airport. He was making conversation. He said, I hope you guys had a great time. We get to the airport. Some car is not where they're supposed to be in the like deloading zone at the terminal. He honks once, no response. Honks twice, no response. Lays on the horn for like 10 seconds straight and then like zips into the spot. While he's getting our uh, suitcases out of the back, the woman who was parked there rolls down her window and she was like, I was just about to leave, but your ass was too impatient. And he said, Fuck you, fuck you, you fucker, fuck you. And she said, you fucking asshole, you fucking dickhead. And then he started to like play like an, an air guitar and like close his eyes and smile at her. And she said, you fucking dickhead, you fucking asshole. And then he like gave us our luggage. Uh, then he got in his car and they were just yelling at each other through the window. And then he drove out and like cut her off so that she swerved into the other lane and almost hit another car. And then everybody was just honking at each other. I was like, Orlando is, I don't know, man. It's not, it, I don't know what happened to this city. I get that, like, I don't expect everybody everywhere to be, like, as happy as the workers are paid to be happy at Disney World. But, like, it's a damn mess, man. Also, why does the water taste like gasoline? Because of the algae bloom? I don't know, man. Also, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, hey, God, I'm kind of losing it at this one. Someone said, is he Venezuelan? I had a crazy Orlando Uber driver two weeks ago that sounded like that. I don't know, man. He could have been Venezuelan for all I know. I'm not saying it's the same guy. I'm just like, it's possible. Can you tell us the 911 story? I mean, literally, it was just, I mean, I was freaking out, okay? Because it was so hot. 
that you just, as soon as you walk outside, you're just sweating, right? And then you sweat through your shirt, you sweat through your shorts, you sweat through your pants, et cetera, et cetera. My, my Crocs were like um, melting to my feet. And thank God I had Crocs because if I was wearing socks and shoes, like I don't even know. I, it would have been like the worst smell of all time. I'm not a, you, let, let me tell you the story, okay? Like the day before we left, my wife was like, check it out, I got you some shoes for Disney World and they're Crocs. And I was like, I don't know if I'm cool enough to wear these. After one day in Florida, I was like, you did you saved my life buying those crocs because it were if we didn't have the crocs i would be torched but anyway i mean there's not much to the story basically i got a voicemail i was walking my daughter around for like a nap in star wars galaxy's edge and i got a voicemail that said orange county sheriff's department orange county sheriff's department Hello, Orange County Sheriff's Department. And then they were like, normal. I'm used to like scam calls, but then they had like official protocol. They were like ending call with like phone number, third attempt or something like that. And then I looked at my call log and it was like, you know, guess what? At 5.03 p.m., uh, your phone made an emergency call to 911. Literally what happened is just my, my damn shorts got so sweaty that like, I guess when the phone was rattling around in my pocket, it triggered like false touches and did an emergency call to the police. And that would like one time it made it to 911. Many times I opened up my phone and it was like, please enter your medical information. And I was like, what the hell? That's weird. I guess that was like another SOS feature that I just triggered. And then an, another time I picked up my phone and it had 9-1 in the emergency call section. And I said, holy fuck. <laughs> I, got, I got to this one just in time. Your pants were in there crying for help. Do I showered two times a day. My wife showered two times a day. We gave our daughter a bath every single day. My nieces showered two times a day. Do you know how hot it has to be? Like, and, and how humid it has to be for an eight-year-old kid to want to shower two times a day. Try to get him to eat like a, a, a floret of broccoli is like pulling teeth. They were, they were like, please, can we go home so we can take a shower? <laughs> it's crazy, man. And I'm, I'm, listen, I met some nice people in Florida. I did get recognized a couple of times. If they're watching right now, first off, Happy, happy birthday and good luck in dental school. And secondly, I, there was a new first for me. I got recognized on the airplane on the way back to Vancouver. And the gentleman was very nice. And he brought up what I thought was a very salient question. He said, I thought I saw you during boarding, but I didn't know the protocol for saying hi to someone you recognize on an airplane because it seems like a little much to get up and go to your seat and then say hi. So he caught me when I was like waiting for the bathroom. And I said, you know what? That's probably, it's an interesting social dilemma you've got there. And I think that you actually probably picked the optimal moment. I, I have to tell you, I sunburned the top of my head. You can't really see, but if you catch me at the right angle, you know in um, Home Alone 1, where Joe Pesci gets his stupid hat super glued to his head, and then he pulls off the, the hat and he's got like all the little bits of hat and hair like glued to the top of his head. That's basically what I look like in, in normal lighting right now. I know you can see it, but like it was worse two days ago. Turns out, so I put sunscreen on the top of my head. Guess what? Um, it turns out that um, it doesn't work if you go underwater. But here's the thing. My idiot brain was like swimming is so fun that I don't even care and then like a couple hours after that I was like I care now but that's okay <laughs> isn't that Danny DeVito and Matilda hang on hang on ow. baby ow, wait ow, a minute ow, ow. I'm getting ow. it now I'm ow. getting it one more I know what you're talking about. They do super glue. Do they not super glue the Home Alone Joe Pesci hat glued to head? 
Okay, I, you're right. I have my movies mixed up. I definitely, his head got lit on fire. Um, in the second one, they filled the toilet with gasoline so that um, he actually explodes. I love the picture of you on Space Mountain. I, the, <laughs> I love that everybody, like someone said, wow, NL's really like mastered taking perfect ride photos. No, I haven't. The only ride photo where I was in control of my reaction was the frozen ride where I'm going like this. And that was like an ironic one because it's you're on frozen, right? It has like no drop essentially. But it, the, the Space Mountain one was actually like pure fear. And it's great. Like you guys don't get the unedited one because we don't want to like, you know, put a photo of our nieces out there. But like my eight-year-old niece is in the front and my 11-year-old niece is right behind her. And they're both like, woo! And I'm, uh, I'm all gripping the gravity bar on Space Mountain like, ah! <laughs> like I'm seeing God. I, it's crazy. I'm not much of a roller coaster guy, but I, I went on some of the more exciting ones at Disney World. But it's not like uh, Six Flags, you know. You're not going on anything too insane. Were people just losing their minds in like 1970 when Space Mountain was built? It's a pretty like intense experience for 2023. In 1966, when people got on Space Mountain, they, they, like, they, people could have died on Space Mountain. Nowadays, you're like, you know, woo! But back in the day, like when they, you'd like get on the carousel and then you go on Space Mountain and see God. Space Mountain only goes 27 miles an hour. Yeah, but it was built like before magnets existed. So the whole ride, you're going like. <laughs> and it's in like the, the complete darkness. I did. I, so I rode Flight of the Flight of Passage, the Avatar ride at Animal Kingdom. But I was laughing because for some reason, like our ride got a little bit screwed up on a, a Flight of Passage. And the dude next to us kept talking. He was cracking jokes. I was like, this guy should be a streamer. They do like a fake, like, we got to genetically match you to a Na'vi so that you can get your avatar to fly on the Banshee. And then it was like, um, error, genetic matching, error. And then the one dad was like, uh, oh, sorry, guys. I think that's me. And then his kid like hit him in the leg and was like, dad, it's a video. I think they do that every time. And then when we were sitting in like the ride vehicle, they do this fake like sinking, sinking, sinking thing. Probably while like the other like se section of the ride gets prepared. It took like six or seven minutes and we were sitting there like stuck at quote unquote 60%. And then the, guy, the same guy was like, it's fun to think that one day we'll look back and say, hey guys, remember when the genetic pairing used to take so long? Now it only takes like a second. And his kids were like, pissed off and I was laughing my ass off he was definitely the the funniest guy in the in the avatar ride but I'm just gonna say it maybe this makes me basic best ride at at Disney World Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind maybe just for me it got a couple of extra bonus points because of the fact that uh, they played Flock of Seagulls I Ran Rise of the Resistance was really good too Avatar was a lot of fun I went on a lot of kids' rides, too. <laughs> I went on It's a Small World After All, um, I think five times with my daughter. A classic. You know what I realized, though? I always hated Small World because it's like, like an earworm. But it's actually great because you get to sit down for like nine minutes. Whereas most of the time, when you like wait in line for a, a ride like that, you wait in line for like an hour and then you're on the ride for three minutes. But to get on the ride, and like my kid was losing her mind. It was like her favorite ride of all time. But for me, I was like, holy cow, it's, it feels like it's 45 degrees Celsius outside and I get to sit down inside for 15 minutes and feel like a good dad. This is crazy. What about pirates? You know what I realized about roller coasters? I'm, I'm learning to live with myself in my unique neurological structure, okay? I think that I was scared of roller coasters because my parents primed me to be scared of roller coasters. 
when we would go to theme parks like once or twice in my entire childhood, my parents would be like, oh, I don't want to get on that ride. It's too scary. I don't want to get on that ride. It's too scary. I'm five years old. My parents are the only people in the world that I trust. I'm like, of course, I'm going to be like imprinted with the idea that roller coasters are scary, okay? So even as an adult, I've been like, oh, that roller coaster is like too scary for me. But you know what saved my life is my eight-year-old niece was like, I don't like roller coasters. And then on the first day, we were like, ride that one with Kate and see if you like it. And she wrote it and she was like, oh, I loved it. And then she wrote all the scary roller coasters like for the rest of the trip. So I was like, I'm not going to be stunted on by an eight-year-old. I'm going to face my fears, okay? Here's, here's where I'm at with roller coasters. I'm not scared of roller coasters. I don't like heights. There's a, there's a difference in the two things there. A roller coaster that goes really fast or a roller coaster that goes through a loop or a roller coaster that goes through twists and turns, that's no problem. A roller coaster that slowly takes you up very, very, very high and then drops you at, as fast as possible, that's where I feel some discomfort, okay? But I'm starting to, I'm getting there. I rode Space Mountain. Space Mountain is, is, there's not really a drop. Guardians of the Galaxy, not really a drop. I'm just, I'm more scared of roller coasters that are like, um, you know, they're named like Behemoth. And it's like, check it out. Remember how last summer we made the tallest roller coaster of all time? Well, we made one a hundred feet taller than that. And I'm like, well, I already shit my pants 20 times on Behemoth, but sure, let's shit it 105 times on Leviathan or whatever. Also, I get that this is kind of the point, but like me personally, maybe I, I should not design a roller coaster, but like I would love a roller coaster that had like a ride vehicle that completely closed you in. Because when you look at the stats, you're like, this shit only goes like 80 kilometers an hour. That's like the speed that you go on a 50 kilometer an hour speed limit road. Like it's, I get that there's a difference. The difference is that when you're on like a little half bicycle and you got nothing on the side of you and nothing in front of you and you're like, I don't trust the restraints at all. And then they like launch you at full speed and you're like, <laughs> when you're in your car, you're like, you know, eating pistachios and tailgating so you're, you're distracted but I would like I, I think you could do a roller coaster that like sends you to space as long as they just put you inside of like a car because I'm pretty sure the monorail goes faster than like almost any ride at roller coaster or at uh, at Disney World I just want to bring this up not everybody is as and I'm glad that they're like this to some extent not everybody concerns themselves so much with not being an encumbrance on the people around them. But when I am in public, I'm, I tend to have an awareness of the people around me and the groups around me, okay? I, I, your, your brain naturally is like, those two people are walking together. That family of seven is walking together, but for some reason, they're all fucking walking six feet apart from each other, spreading out as much as possible. And it's not like they don't like each other, like they're all having a conversation with each other where they're shouting, but at the same time, they can't be close to each other or walk in like double file line because then they would be making an admission that it's not okay to be wasting somebody else's time by just getting in the way all the time. Regardless, the most important one is when you see parents and kids in a group, you never filter in between the group, okay? Because you make it easy for the kids to stay with the parents. The kids can get scared, they can get lost, the parents have got a lot to focus on, especially if they got more than one kid. The number of, I, it happened probably like 75 times a day. It would be like my wife and my two nieces walking. I would be less than a foot behind them pushing my daughter in the stroller and then like a family of nine would just sidle in like they'd rush to get in between us and then slow right down like they're in uh, such a rush to get nowhere because they don't know where they're going they can't wait half a second for this group to stay together so instead they're like mm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm just gonna split you guys up really quick and then stand still and look at my phone is that okay now, I also saw lots of people that said, hey, you go ahead. Hey, sorry, like, 
you know, my kid went a little crazy and they bumped into you. And I, we gave each other knowing nods that it's like, we're in this together, brother. Like, we're in this together, sister. But there's also a lot of people where I was like, I don't care if your like 10 year old is looking at their phone, but like mom, dad, the 10 year old and the six year old, they can't all be looking at their phone. So the six year old better put the phone away because somebody, the parents clearly are not responsible enough to, to, you know, drive everybody in the, in the right way and keep everybody grouped together. So it's time to grow up, mister. And then so you'll just naturally like bump into people because they're not, I mean, they're looking at their phones, which I get because you need the app to like, you know, figure out where you're going and you need the map. But they'll like bump into you because they're on their phone. And then I got mean mugged like once a day by some, and that's where the tweet came from. You would like bump into a dude, like you shoulder check. I'd say sorry and they'd look at me like this. Like, what, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I'm like, sorry, I'm just trying to stay with my fucking family and walk in a straight line. I know that's weird here. And then their shirt is like Mickey Mouse wearing a hat that says there's no place like home. And I'm like, we're really gonna, we're gonna pretend that we're hard? We're in Disney World, idiot. I'm not saying nobody fights in Disney World, but I'm too smart to get in a fist fight at Disney World. That's all I got, basically. That and like, I was, I mean, you gotta... If I may be um, honest, so I finished the stream on Friday, right? Recorded some Super Auto Pets videos that picked up my daughter from daycare. That takes you to five. My in-laws, uh, with my two nieces that were coming with us in tow, drove up from Washington after work. So they didn't arrive here until 9.30. We had to get up at like 5.30 a.m. to make the flight, okay? So they arrived Friday night at 9.30 because the whole family doesn't get to see each other all that often, my wife's parents came too, and my wife's 91-year-old grandma came too. It was like an impromptu family reunion. It started 9.30 p.m. on Friday. My sister-in-law said, we and the kids haven't eaten anything. So in the back channel, they texted their mom, my mother-in-law, to go to the Korean grocery store. They didn't get... A frozen pizza, we could all cook and eat on paper plates. They didn't get, you know, McDonald's we could just throw in the trash. They got two huge soups. They got a salantang and a gamjatang. And then we had to fire up the burners at 10 p.m., boil the soups. Ten people there, everybody has to try a little bit of each soup. My wife's grabbing homemade banchan out of the fridge and arranging it on plates. Oh, did everybody needs some water. Oh, this water is good, but can I have some tea instead? Okay, here's some tea. Oh, hey, do you guys have anything to drink? Okay, here you go. Oh, the kids really need some fruit. Okay, here you go. Let's chop up some fruit for you. We didn't go to bed until like 1 a.m. I was losing my mind. You can't just do that. You can't show up at someone's house. The night before like a morning flight with two soups, man. And then like a party of 10. My, like I was putting our baby to sleep at 12.30 or something like that, which is insane because she's two years old. And my wife is doing like an uh, entire um, chusok worth of dishes downstairs. And then we wake up early in the morning and this is where I get my comeuppance, okay? Or my revenge. Because everybody's gangster. When you got Salantang and Gamjatang at 12.45 a.m., then 5.30 rolls around and I'm up and I'm fresh as a daisy. Everybody else is like, oh, oh, I'm so tired. You should have thought of that. You made the soup. This is what they make like drive throughs for. You haven't eaten. It's uh, 10 p.m. We're taking your kids to Disney World for a week starting tomorrow. You get some McDonald's in the car, eat it, throw it in our trash can. No problem, okay? The soup is, is madness. Everybody's gangster. At 1 a.m., nobody wants to wake up at 5.45. I'm like the gif. Yeah, I didn't get no sleep because of you. You're not getting any sleep because of me. Also, can I tell you, this is another one. I swear this is verbatim. And we, we got to pivot to some gaming, okay? But I swear that this is all 100% true. It, the preamble for this is that in order to get... It, crossing the border from Canada to the United States, you could use your passport. There's another thing that's called a nexus, which is basically like you did an interview with customs where they're like, are you a terrorist? And you're like, no. And then they're like, okay, here you can go in a shorter line forever. It's basically the equivalent of your passport, more or less. Don't get it. 
because it's good. And if you get it, it's going to make it worse for me. So it's like a tragedy of the commons thing. Do not get it, okay? The line's full. Keep waiting an hour and a half to get through the border while I wait 90 seconds, okay? Now, <clears throat> my, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law were taking our nieces from the U.S. to Canada so that we could fly to Orlando and go to Disney World for a week. I... Talk to my wife while they were driving. I, and I'm just, I'm, I'm anxious about this kind of stuff. Because I know that if we get stopped at customs, my ass is going to Guantanamo and my wife and my two nieces are going to fly back first class to Vancouver, right? So I know that I got to clean my own mirror on this one. So I went to my wife and I said, this might sound stupid, but your sister's definitely going to bring the passports, Right. And then she's, I, I like basically apologized as I said it. Because I was like, I know your sister is not dumb. So I apologize for even surfacing the possibility that this will happen. Because if you text her, did you bring the passports? She's going to be like, you think I'm stupid? Of course I brought the passports. So anyway, they get here. They didn't bring the passports. They only got the Nexus. We looked it up online. It should be no problem. They recommend having the passports, but you should be able to get across the... Because they got into Canada with just the Nexus. You should be able to get into America with just the Nexus. We go through American customs in Vancouver. I'm freaking the fuck out because they don't have their passports, for one. And also, they're not my kids. So we got like a, a signed letter from their parents that's like they're allowed to go with their aunt and uncle to Florida just in case we go through American customs, they say, oh, two of your kids were born in America, huh? I say, uh, like non-committal <laughs> answer. And they say, enjoy your stay. No problem. They didn't even look, the last names don't even match. So we got on, we were like, it's totally fine. Enjoyed a nice week in Orlando. Get to the Orlando airport. Um, hand them the nexuses for the kids. They say, were, uh, what about their passports? And we say, oh, their parents didn't give us their passports. They say, well, you can't get on the airplane without a passport. Everybody needs a passport. And then I swear to you, I'm not good at fixing things. I'm not good at um, cleaning things. I said, this is my time. This is my moment. We're in an urgent situation where communication and customer service is very important. A good bedside manner is required here. I walked up and I said, okay, listen, their parents drove them to Canada. They didn't bring the passport. They only brought the Nexus. We managed to get to Orlando with just the Nexus and they told us it was okay. But if you're saying it's not okay, uh, what can we do to resolve the situation? And then the lady said, well, we deal with this every day, and I'm telling you, you can't get on the airplane without their passports. But if it makes you feel better, we'll call our supervisor over and she can tell you instead of me. So in my head, I said, fuck you. But in reality, I said, okay, thank you so much. Sorry about this. The supervisor came over and I explained the exact same situation to the supervisor. And she said, oh yeah, normally we wouldn't do it, but just for today, it's fine. Do you see what you can get if you just be nice to people and basically acknowledge like, hey, we made a mistake? Do you know how many rules in society are basically like you 100% need this? And then you're like, well, I don't have it, but you say it nicely. And they're like, oh, okay, that's fine, actually. It happens all the time, man. But then we, we got like on the tram to get to the terminal to get on the airplane and my heart was like, cocoon, 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 cocoon. <laughs> So I was like, I do not want to stay in Orlando for whatever length of time it's going to take for those passports to arrive in the mail. But they did say, they were like, we know that you'll probably get sent to secondary when you arrive in Toronto. And then in my head, I was like, listen, we're going to Vancouver, but I don't even want to open that can of worms. So I'm just going to take that one. So I was like, okay, whatever, we'll go to secondary. I'm not concerned about going to secondary. I'll tell them the same thing I told you, right? We got to Vancouver. They print out the customs form. I give it to the customs agent. Anything to declare? No. Welcome home. It's all for show, brother. None of it makes any damn sense. He's him. <laughs> I think you're right. I think, I think it is vibes-based. I know this sounds crazy because like, I 
present on stream as not being that normal because you're seeing my innermost thoughts most of the time. Most people, I don't think, have innermost thoughts that are normal. That's why if they were normal, you would say them probably. But I think that basically they just looked at this guy and said, he's a good dude. <laughs> let, him, let him in. <laughs> he's got like a second degree sunburn on the top of his head. He's been through a lot. I set off the metal detector at TSA PreCheck and they just waved me through. Justin, it's all made up. I was kind of losing it at, the, at going through security too. It's, you know, in, at Orlando, for, maybe it was just that day, the security, when you put the shit through the conveyor belt, they don't have bins. They were like, just put all your shit on the rods. I'm like, are you crazy? I'm not putting my cell phone on the damn rod and sending it through. So I just opened up my backpack and shoved it in there. But I'm like, what's, what's wrong with this poverty airport, man? You think I'm going to put my car keys on the rods? There's no then the dude said, I, I folded up the stroller and went to like hand it to the security agent, which is what you do at every other airport. And he said, nah, dude, put it through the conveyor. I said, will it fit? He said, we're going to find out. Okay, we put it on. It fit. But at the same time, I was like, why are you do doing this to yourself? It's insanity. And then, so I'm dealing with the one guy. Take your shoes off. Don't take your shoes off. Put the stuff in the bin. Not that one. There's no bins. You got to take out your laptop. Don't take out your iPad. Like every airport has different rules. And then uh, I go, I, this is my protocol. I stand in front of the metal detector and I wait for the agent to go like this. This time I stand in front of the metal detector. The dude sighs and says, you don't have to wait, people. Speaking to nobody in particular, but obviously me specifically. You don't have to wait, people. Just keep on moving through. Would it kill you to just like be a little bit nice? Like I understand you're dealing with stressed out people all day, but at the same time, like every airport is different. As some air I'm in Florida, motherfucker. If I just walk through the metal detector in like Miami, they're going to shoot me in the chest. No, in Orlando, oh, that's Miami. That's Miami. It's different there. In Orlando, you could just walk through. You don't read Southeastern American airports quarterly. Also, I don't <laughs> This is also I swear to you that this is true. At the on the airplane, the seatbelt sign was on the whole flight. That's not the pilot's fault. It's the earth, okay? But my nieces had to go to the bathroom. They said, can we go to the bathroom when the lights are on? I said, this is America, baby. You, you're American citizens. You could do whatever you want. So I walked them down the aisle to the one bathroom for the thousand people. They get into the, the two lavatories and I'm just standing there. And one of the flight attendants came up to me and said, sir, like I legally have to remind you that the seatbelt sign is on, you can go to the bathroom, but it's at your own risk. And I said, okay, it's always at my own risk. I, I didn't say that part, but I said, okay, thank you. Then she sat down in her chair, and I swear to you, this is true. She pulled out her iPad, she showed it to the flight attendant that was sitting in the seat across from her and said, check it out, it's Roller Coaster Tycoon. Aren't you at work right now? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm stoked that you're enjoying a classic video game, but like, it's, it's a little crazy. I can fix her. <laughs> and a big thank you to the librarian for collating that last uh, 45 minutes of content. Okay, now we're gaming. We're playing Tales and Tactics. Can I also say, and I, you know what annoys me? I'm sorry that we haven't even clicked on the game yet, and we're already doing like another bit. I get annoyed when people who don't have kids hear a parent complain about a situation with their kids and say, like, you're the one that had them. I know, okay? Like, it, it, it seems like if... Because did you see the Twitter thread that went viral that was like, give me your parenting take that would have people like this and it's the dude with the swords from Tangled? And then, like, literally every reply that went viral to that was, like, someone who doesn't have kids, and it was like, if you... Force your kid to eat vegetables. You're a bad parent. And then like 100,000 11-year-olds like retweeted it and were like, so true, so true. I'm not going to force my kids to ever eat broccoli. I'm just going to let them eat whatever they want. They'll fucking like swell up like the blueberry girl from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Anyway, so I hate when people 
that don't have kids are like, if you ever are like, oh, I'm like, I need, mommy needs a little bit of me time. They're like, well, you should never have kids if you don't wanna always be around them. Yeah, okay, but everyone needs a break now and then. I just, all I wanna say, says from Friday at 9.30 p.m. until, well, okay, from Friday at 9.30 p.m. until Sunday morning at 2 a.m., I was taking care of my daughter, with my wife, with my wife, but I was taking care of my daughter and my 11 and eight year old niece, okay? Whole week. I, if you got three kids, this is why I tweeted it, you're built different. One kid, you get a little burned out sometimes. You're like, I, I need some me time. I need to sit in the quiet room, a sensory deprivation tank. If you have three kids, you are a hero. And as I'm not really thinking about the economics of it right now, but the government should send you money. I don't know how much, but like enough that you can work if you want to, but you don't have to, in my personal opinion, because you're also putting more people into the tax base for the future. You're doing a public service. At least pay for your daycare or something. Exactly. Anyway, just I'm saying Dan and Sips are heroes. This right now, the, the last 45 minutes has been my first time not being in the presence of one to three girls between the age of two and 11 in like nine days. I'm losing it, man. I'm loving life. <laughs> this is the adult tour. We can say whatever we want. We can, we can drink. We can swear. Like that's, and I know, I'm sorry, we haven't even started playing the game. There's people on YouTube are really mad, but like some people on YouTube are like, this guy's funny as fuck. That's why when I got on the airplane and I was looking at what movies to watch, I was just at Disney World for a whole week. They were like, do you want to watch Guardians of the Galaxy 3? I said, fuck you, I don't want to watch Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Are you crazy? I put on Lady Bird, cried three times. Thought it was an amazing movie. I felt bad that for years I'd been, I thought it was like a stodgy, like come, a coming of age drama when it's actually like A24's Napoleon Dynamite. Then I put on Rice Boy Sleeps, a Canadian film about a single mother from Korea who leaves to live in Coquitlam for a, a better life. And then it's like the coming of age of that kid and like what it means to have some connection to your ancestry while simultaneously being like integrated into a different society and what it means to grow up. And I cried the whole time. I cried almost the entire movie, I think. I, that was exactly what I needed after like uh, seven days of, um, hey, Rocket, we got to hit the jump boosters to get through the wormhole. I needed some like mature entertainment, man. And I got it. <laughs> when this bar reaches zero, the unit is out of this fight for the combat and will return to full health when the combat is finished. You realize we got real, what the fuck am I doing? We have real problems in this world. You want me to sit here and read a sentence that says, this is health, when it reaches zero, the unit is out of the fight for this combat? We got real fucking problems. I'm experiencing a loss of purpose. What's going on? What am I doing, man? I gotta call my mom. NL, our dorm is removing all ovens. Which air fryer should I get? Just get like a Bunsen burner and cook stuff in your, on your Bunsen burner. Also, your dorm should not have an oven. Like, no disrespect. If you're 18, 19, and you're living in the dorms, you're probably like, fuck you, I'm responsible. But you're not. You'll realize in 12 years, you're not responsible enough to have an oven. Like, without real adult supervision. 99% of the time, it's going to be fine for you to have an oven. But like 1% of the time, you and your friends are going to get way too fucking high and you're going to preheat the oven for a frozen pizza and you're going to like put the pizza in the oven and then you're going to fall asleep. You're going to get distracted by like Super Smash Brothers. You're going to fall asleep. You're going to wake up to the whole building getting evacuated, okay? And you only need like one person in your dorm to do that once to fuck it up for everybody, okay? I'm not saying, maybe you're fine, but are you willing to vouch for like every other person in your dorm as well? Did I ever tell you the story about how we had a fire alarm at our dorm? And then the next morning we went to the dining hall for breakfast and we were like, man, it was so annoying at like 3 a.m. We had to evacuate for that fire alarm. And then my one friend was like, what are you talking about? And then it turns out that he slept through the entire fire drill and he got like really scared deep down to his core. We were laughing at him and he was like, this is not funny. Like if that was a real fire, I would be dead. And we were like, that's why it's funny. Anyway. <laughs>
Go to character select. I don't, I don't know what any of this stuff is and I'm scared. Singrim Bold Pebble. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. Singrim Bold Pebble. Let me learn some more about this individual. Is there like a, is there a character biography or something like that? I'm sorry, I can't begin the tale. The Grand Tournament, a prestigious event hosted every year by a group of powerful callers known as the Daya. Isn't that the cheese that's made of like uh, eggshells? Speaking of Daya and other foods that taste bad, some of you guys are cool. Do not eat at the Orlando Airport Outback Steakhouse before you get on your airplane. I had to defecate on the airplane. It's the first time I've done it in like 11 years. I would never defecate on an airplane unless it was an emergency. And it was an emergency, okay? And then my wife was like, oh no, is your stomach okay? I said, I don't think something, something was not right with that Outback. And then yesterday she had a stomach ache. That's all I'm saying, okay? Also, the two kids, like my nieces, ordered the kids chicken tenders. $8.99. My wife ordered the adults chicken tenders, $16.99. Tell me that motherfucker didn't bring out three identical plates. That's all I'm saying! Now let's see, we got Volcanus. <laughs> Choose from a roster of fantastic creatures such as the Mushroom Man Amanito or magma-based elemental Volcanus. Don't forget about Grundy, the ghoul scrapper, and Bark. A tree folk mage who can conjure a distracting replica. It's just something like I, I, it's just fun to watch little guys fight, right? Like it makes you feel like you're, I, I finally understand medieval nobles. No wonder you'd be up there in a little tower watching dudes, you're like, hey, attack that guy. They're like, yes, sir, my lord. You have like the divine right of kings, da, 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 you know? I could totally see why they were so popular to be a king in the middle ages. What do you think you would be in medieval times? I would be eaten and rooting for the Red Knight, for sure. But also, um, I was talking about it on my fifth ride through It's a Small World. I said to Kate, isn't it crazy that if I was born like 150 years ago, my coastal elite ass would probably be like a little cowboy or something like that? Or like a, I'll be like a, a logger? That doesn't seem like it would fit right at all. Or a lumberjack? Can't really picture my. I, I could picture myself on like a on a fishing vessel or something like that. I could see myself being the guy that hauls in like the lobster traps or something like that. But I don't. I, I don't know, man. I don't know what else I could do. You'd never make it without glasses. Well, the th my eyes were not that bad until I wore glasses. It's like the same thing. It's like uh, you know, I never got a sunburn until I started wearing sunscreen and then like going to Florida, I guess. Smartest guy in the world. Did you see the post that was like, that uh, the uh, Roman guy who died laughing at his own joke? He was the head of the Stoic school of philosophy and he was at a party and there was a donkey eating figs. And then he said, perhaps give the donkey a drink of wine so it might wash down the figs and then laughed so hard at his own joke that he fucking died. It's one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my entire life. And then Joe Weisenthal, the host of Odd Lots, replied, Vaxxed? Question mark. Got me pretty good. There's two, two great jokes I've heard this morning already. Let's make Volcanus <laughs> a popular name. Well, that shows me up, I guess. I'm entering my live and let live era, but I do have to say, um, some of the names I heard parents calling out at Disney World were kind of surprising to me. I saw on the first day, I heard a mom go, Jet Li! <laughs> I needed a story. I swear, that the, I swear the kid's name was Jet Li. But I did not think about it as if it was Jet Li until just now. Like from all the movies? From the one? But I swear the kid was called Jet Li. But like J, I think the way she said it, it sounded like J-E-T-L-E-Y. We love our Jet Li, don't we, folks? I haven't done the impression in like a week. Maybe I lost it. Chibli, Chibli, Olivia Munn. Oli Olivia Munn. Olivia Munn, ladies and gentlemen, Olivia Munn. And Chibli, Chibli's here too. 
Lovely Momo, lovely Tomo, she's lovely, isn't she, folks? We love her, she's lovely, so we love her. Don't even get me started, by the way. Can I, I don't know if you know this about uh, Disney World, okay? I, I made that tweet about becoming a return to trad Twitter account, but only for those paper towel dispensers where it just has one lever, like a slot machine that you yank on, and then the perfect amount of paper towel comes out. Trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. Think about it every time I was in a damn Star Wars bathroom and they got a, the world's shittiest paper towel dispenser. You got to wave your hand in front of an electric sensor that only works 1% of the time. Uh, and then it spits out one millimeter of paper towel. And then it has like a sticker on top of it that says like, as a result of Disney's commitment to renewability and the environment, we encourage you to use as little paper towel as possible. Your ass didn't do anything. I'm the one using less paper towel. You're taking the credit. Meanwhile, your CEO is flying to the Super Bowl on a private jet. Bob Iger gets to fly to his damn friends, kids, quinceanera on a private jet just because I'm using one micrometer of paper towel all the time. But then, check this out, okay? At the, the vending machines, not the, not the vending machines, but like the fountain drink area at many Disney areas, they've revolutionized drink technology. I know what you're thinking. We got cups and we got levers and then the liquid comes out. How could it get any better than that? Check this out. You can now buy a reusable cup that has a microchip in the bottom of it. You place the cup with the microchip on the drink dispenser it pings a damn server to check to see if your cup is valid because it only lasts like seven days or something like that. It goes bing, 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 drink authorized. Then you press the button and you can get your damn drink. I know what you're thinking. Uh, doesn't that cause lots of problems? Yes, yes it does. And there's absolutely no reason for it whatsoever. Like for example, you ever fill up like 90% of your soda cup and then you're waiting for the foam to come down so you can add more so you don't overfill it? Too bad, bitch, because uh, you can only refill your drink once every three minutes. So if you don't get the pour that you liked uh, on the first push, tough luck, motherfucker. Come back in three minutes or you could top that son of a gun up. We had cups and levers. It was perfect. We didn't have to get packets and TCP IP protocols and stuff like that involved. We didn't have to have a a Wi-Fi chip inside of the damn Coke machine? What's the problem? We don't need it, man. It was working perfect. You don't need an electric paper towel dispenser. You just, you just yank on the slot machine and it spits out enough paper towel. Motherfuckers install like a little sink in the, they're like, wash your hands for 20 seconds. Meanwhile, the sink on full blast goes drip. Drip, drip. Why does it go drip, drip, drip? As a result of Disney's continuing commitment to conserve water, we encourage you to use as little water as possible, but we will shoot you in the head if you don't wash your hands for at least 20 seconds because we're also trying to prevent infectious disease from being transmitted. Meanwhile, go out and watch a fucking water fountain spit hundreds of liters of water over and over just onto the sidewalk because it's all fucking miscalibrated and shit. Make it make sense, man. I'm just trying to wash my hands. I was talking about how your parents brought over two oh, enormous yeah. chungol at uh, like 11 p.m. Yes. when we were leaving for vacation the next morning. Yes. We did, and the people were like, rate the soup. We didn't eat the soup because our responsible asses ate dinner like four yeah. hours earlier. Yeah. They were like, oh, why don't you sit down and eat some dinner with us? And I'm like, bro, we go to bed at like 9.30 now. It's we're, crazy, yeah. We got a baby and uh, we, don't, we don't eat. Like they came around 10 p.m with a bunch of food. It was crazy, your 91 year old grandma, I was putting our baby to bed. Your 91 year old grandma was like, stop, I have to talk to you. I was like, lady, it's 11.45 PM. You're 91 fucking years old. Go to bed, what are you doing? My grandma had nothing to do with this. She's just along for the ride. It was, it was a combination of my older sister and my mom, how even my mom, did I tell, did you know she brought her own rice cooker? I did see that. She did bring her own rice cooker. Cause she's like, I, I heard that you got a small rice cooker. So I brought our rice cooker. <clears throat> and I'm just like, literally they like, at 10 PM, they moved in basically. They, they, brought, they brought enough food for two huge pots <laughs> of soup 
rice cooker, and then she was like, oh, I was where's it. like the side dish? And then from the store that they bought, they only gave them like a little kimchi, and they're like, there's that much kimchi, and there's like eight of us, what are we going to do? Your brother-in-law was like, do you guys have any alcohol? And yeah. really stressed out. We're like, the only alcohol we have is champagne. He said, oh, no. This dude said no to champagne. Yeah, he's like, oh, I don't want champagne. It's going to be crazy. I mean, we don't want the champagne either. That's why we have it. If we wanted it, it would have been consumed by now. <laughs> and then uh, we, have, we have like a cooking sake. And then my brother-in-law goes in and goes like, hey, you have sake? Can we have some sake? I'm like, oh, I guess you could. And he's like, is it okay if we clear this whole bottle? And I'm like, what? You guys are driving back. And then it's like, yeah, this is nothing. I'm like, no, you guys are not allowed to drink my full bottle of sake. You crazy? Not to mention, it was probably opened in like 2021. Oh, sake is like crystal. I don't think so. I think so. I mean, it's, I use it for cooking. Yeah, but then you drop it in the pan and it goes like... Sss. Yeah. They brought like a six to-go plastic container full of soup. And then my mom goes like, do you think that's okay? And I was like... <laughs> Why do you mean that's okay? Like, my sis, my mom was like, well, I think we need to transfer all this soup into a, a different bowl. And I'm like, what do you mean different bowl? And then it's like, oh, you know, I think it's hard to eat it like that. I'm like, what do you want me to do? And then she's like, well, can we transfer over to like, do you have pots? Maybe we can like put it in like, a pot. Lady, this is in Changmo Jeep. And I was like, what? And it's like, it's kind of hard to eat it like that. And I was like, well, you brought it like that though. So I pull out two big pots, and I only have two big pots, and then I transfer them over. My sister comes over, she goes like, ah, oh, is the dinner ready? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then they go like, oh, we have too many people, there is, there is not enough uh, uh, seats on the dinner table, what should we do? I'm like, you can sit here. And they're like, okay. And it's like, oh, there's not much of like side dish. Do you have any? And I was like, well, I did cook some side dish. And she's like, well, you can just bring them out, maybe we'll eat some. And then they ate all the food that I cooked. And I, I was like, hey, don't leave any leftovers because like I have to clean up so much and it's like 11.30 p.m. and I gotta go to the, the airport in the morning. And then they're like, oh, I'm too full. And then they just left it like that. Nobody cleaned up, I have to clean up. Crazy. We got a lot of trauma from the past week. Sensei. Had a lot of fun too. We got a lot of trauma. I was talking to your brother-in-law and I was like, I mean, I was kind of at my wits end. I was like, how is Kate's mom like so energetic at 11.30 p.m.? And then he was like, it's because she wakes up at like one in the afternoon. Really? I was like, that can't be true. She's like, she's like 62 years old. But she was really like, I was... I put our kid to sleep on like a different floor and then I had to close the door because she was like, she was going crazy down here. You, oh, you said it on me. <laughs> oh man. It's just crazy. We're like, we got a flight in the morning and they would like have a big pot of soup at like 11 p.m. for dinner and then have to do the dishes for 10 people before we go to sleep, before we wake up to take your grandkids I was trying to figure out the familiar relationship there on a trip I just said next time we come over to their house I'm showing up at 1 a.m. I'm bringing an uncooked turkey I say hey we, we were a little hungry yes I know we live in an air we live in a house that has food and the drive from our house to your house passes by 500 restaurants where we could easily get something to eat but check it out I, I had a turkey craving I'm gonna, is it okay? Is it okay if I start uh, just preheating your oven to 425 degrees Celsius? It should only take like six or seven hours for the whole bird to be done. Oh, and of course, when you have a turkey, you can't just have turkey, right? When you have solentong, you can't just have the soup. You got to have all the banchan. So you got to have the gamja cholim. You got to have the kong namul. You got to have the, all this stuff. You got, oh, well, you, the, the rice, I understand. You got to have the rice, but you got to have kimchi. Oh, I didn't just mean cabbage kimchi. You got to have uh, radish kimchi. You got to have danmuji. You got to have cucumber kimchi. It's out of control, man. Do they still do autographs at Disney? I mean, they do. I didn't bring my autograph book, though, which I'll never forgive myself for. Tweet that I didn't make, but actually happened. Um, we saw the Frozen sing-along spectacular, all right? At the end of the show, Elsa comes out, she sings Let It Go. Of course, you know that, because it's a Frozen show for little kids, right? 
Everyone cheered. It's like standing ovation when Elsa came out. Dude behind me said, I don't know why they're clapping. It's not even the real Elsa. There is no real Elsa, you dumb motherfucker. Go back to school. She's a cartoon. No, no I meant, I mean, it's not Adina Menzel. No, that's not what you said. You didn't say it's not Adina Menzel. You said it's not the real Elsa. You're fucking 53 years old. You know how embarrassing that is? Give me a leech knife sheath. I would like to place this on Monty the second. What happened? I've uncommon units unlocked, and I can live through a death. <laughs> Doesn't really make sense, but that's okay. You guys don't have any items. Um, I think we should buy a buckler. Well, I don't know. Some of these are pretty good, man. Mallet of mashing. Every three seconds, the wearer's next attack deals bonus spell damage equal to four percent of the wearer's ma. What the fuck are you saying to me, bro? What? What? We, we, we have one life on planet Earth, and this is how we're spending it. I didn't even tell Kate this. You can tell Kate when she starts her stream, unless she's listening right now. I was reading my daughter a book about dinosaurs last night, and she spent all week with her nieces, so they've been talking a lot. I think it made her brain grow like 20%. She was pointing at pictures of dinosaurs. There's this weird dinosaur called Dino Kyrus that sounds like a broken DVD player. He goes like <laughs> She pointed at Dino Kyrus and said, this dinosaur, what's its name? I said, Dino Kyrus. She said, Dino Kyrus, and uh, Pachycephalosaurus are bad dinosaurs. They attack meat eaters like T-Rex. First, that dinosaur, what's his name? I said, Dino Kyrus. Dino Kyrus drinks water, then spits water at T-Rex, then Pachycephalosaurus bonks T-Rex with its head. And I said, in my head, I was like, what is she talking about? But. Like, as a father, I was like, holy cow, your speech is out of control. <laughs> and your imagination. I'm like, I don't know if this happened in a dream or something like that. I don't know if paleontology is advanced enough that you can conjure an image of, like, a 2v1 fight. But she was going crazy, man. Did you see the tweet where the guy said, we went on a camping trip? Uh, we went on a cabin trip with uh, my family. And that... In the first morning we woke up, my six-year-old daughter said, Daddy, I met a girl under the bed. Oh, that's nice, sweetie. Yeah, she helped me go to sleep. She can help you go to sleep, too. <laughs> Her name is Melatonin. NL can barely figure out placement in SAP. You guys are, you don't know this yet, but I know it. I would say 92% of people watching this and talking shit about my SAP performance are about to look real silly when Ranked comes out. That's all I'm going to say. You don't even know that the, the hours that I've put into that game, you can't help but be in the top 10% of players, without a doubt. It's like, you might think that you can outpedal me on the bike. You're delusional, okay? Maybe Skylar Kroom, Carl Newbert, you guys might have a chance. Kip Casper, we've established. But some people are probably like, yeah, but when... I'm, I don't exercise much, but when, the, when, my, when my nuts are on the line, my mentality is different. I'm gonna, you're, you're gonna die on the bike. You're gonna have a heart attack or you're gonna fall off. It's, it's, it's this simple. It's the same with SAP, okay? You might think like you just have a better brain because all of my mistakes are on display for you. We'll find out. Let's just put it that way. Did you see the tweet about the guy who has $1.2,000 in DoorDash from Hooters? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, you don't need me to tell you this, I'm sure. I mean, $3,000 from Chili's is what everybody fixated on. And there's a lot there as well, because, like, that's just insane. Spending $1,200 on Hooters DoorDash is insanely funny. Like, there's, I didn't know that it was a joke from 30 Rock, but there's that 30 Rock joke that's like, to celebrate, we should, we should get takeout from Hooters. And then the guy's like, why would we get takeout from Hooters? And then he said, we'll know they touched it. That's just crazy, man. Now I say that, I do want to say, I've never been to Hooters. My hypothesis is that the food is not that good because then it would be named like good food restaurant instead of being named a euphemism for the waitresses having particular attributes, okay? Let me put it this way. When we were in Disney World, we went to a rainforest cafe. And that 
restaurant is called the Rainforest Cafe. It's not called the Good Food Restaurant. So I think I have some understanding of the gimmick. <laughs> the day after we went to the Rainforest Cafe, we went to a restaurant called T-Rex. And when I walked in, it was like PTSD. I was like, oh man, this looks a lot like the Rainforest Cafe. I looked at the menu, it was exactly the same menu. And the gimmick is that there's dinosaurs instead of like animatronic animals. And at Rainforest Cafe, I ordered a Big Island Caesar salad. At T-Rex, I ordered a dinosaurus, a large dinosaur, dino Caesar salad, like salad saurus, something like that. Same exact thing came out. Like, I'm not trying to be an extreme hater. I get that I'm at the Rainforest Cafe. Like, in general, don't get me wrong, I had a good time at, at Disney World. The one thing that both me and my wife said about at least a third of the places we ate was like, why is the food so shit? Like, the, the rest of the parks, they've done an amazing job, but the food is like... I mean, the, the Rainforest Cafe and T-Rex, there's like no excuse. The Caesar salad was like... The, the chicken tasted like beef jerky. It was crazy. Food at Epcot was pretty good, I'll admit. But I feel like with Epcot, like, we had two young kids with us. So I wasn't about to get, you know, like 12 beers from 12 <laughs> different fake countries around the world. Also, I kind of, I was that guy. I was at Disney World at Epcot. Walked by the Canada section. I was like, I bet they'll have poutine. Cheddar and broccoli soup. Famous Canadian cheddar and broccoli soup. What the hell are you talking about? What was the best thing you had? Listen, I didn't know that you guys know so much about Disney. Like if someone brought this up to me six months ago, I would have been like, I have no frame of reference for what you're talking about. But now every time I say something, people are like plus two, plus two, plus two. I'm losing my mind. Best food we had? The uh, Tusker restaurant in Animal Kingdom was a, was a pretty sick African food buffet. That was really good. Can I, this one will blow your mind. This will, it will shock you. You will not believe me, okay? The, because what I'm about to say is going to sound crazy. The Toy Story themed restaurant, Roundup Rodeo, in Toy Story Land in Disney Hollywood Springs, is it goes fucking crazy. It was incredible. That place sucks. You suck. I'm not shocked. The sides were good. The barbecue was pretty good. And the best part, the barbecue is like free refills, which is the only thing at Disney where they're not bending you over a barrel. I mean, like, a water is like $3.75. They come around, they're like, do you want some more brisket? I'm like, I better fill up now because I don't want to pay nine bucks for a blueberry muffin at breakfast. That's not barbecue? Listen, you Texas motherfucker. Brisket isn't barbecue? Come on. The barbecue in Epcot USA goes hard. Motherfucker, you're going to Epcot and you're going to the American Pavilion? You're in America. The whole gimmick of the place is that you could... Try stuff from around the world. Your ass walks to the China stall and you're like, mmm, bacon cheeseburger dumplings? No thanks, I don't like ethnic food. Take me back to America. I didn't even know, I'm being sincere with you, I didn't know there was an America part of Epcot. I thought because the whole park was in America, like just everything that was not, Ep like in the food part was America. Also, Thank you to the world at large for validating me, okay? Because I had a great time at all the Disney parks. My personal ranking it differs from the, the canonical ranking, I'll admit, okay? I would say for me, number one was Disney Hollywood Studios, okay? I thought they had... Uh, give me a one. Oh. I thought they had the best uh, rides, the most exciting rides. Number two, I would probably say Magic Kingdom. It's classic. Number three, I would put Animal Kingdom. Number four, I would put Epcot with the caveat that if it was just me and my wife, we would have torn up Epcot. Could easily be at the top of the list, but I'm not out here trying to get hammered on, you know, beverages from around the world uh, while also trying to take care of two kids who are like my 
nieces. So like if I lose them at Epcot, I'm going to end up like dead somewhere or at least feeling very bad. That being said, at Animal Kingdom, we rode Kilimanjaro safaris, okay? It's the only theme park I've ever seen in my entire life. You get in a fucking Jeep, they drive you out into the African savanna, and they're like, boom, there's a fucking elephant. There's seven giraffes. There's 10 gazelles. There's a wildebeest. There's three lions. There's a fucking hippopotamus. There's a hippopotamus in the theme park? We got off of the ride, and I was like, that's one of the best theme park rides I've ever done in my entire life. Everybody else in the party, eh, 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 it's not as good as the ride where you get in a fake reed raft and go down a little canal and look at puppets of fake animals from the world of Pandora. And then I, I, thought I was getting gaslit, so I would Googled while I was on the toilet one day, I Googled Disney World Rides Ranked. Looked at like 10 different lists. Every single one, there's like 58 rides at uh, Disney World, okay? Every single one has Kilimanjaro safaris in like the top eight. So I'm just, I had to do that for my own sanity and to defend myself a little bit because I, I thought that I w was just an idiot or something like that. I thought I was being a caricature of myself that was like, you know, oh, my favorite part of the theme park is the rides. I wasn't. I was being a smart guy. You're out of here. You fucking suck. Give me the win. We're going, we're going for it. Oh, I don't have enough gold. <laughs> Get out of here. You fucking suck. There we go. This is the ticket right here. Anyway, Kilimanjaro Safaris is sick. I would highly recommend it. But, I mean, if you're going to Animal Kingdom, you're going to go on Kilimanjaro Safaris. That's just a given. Yes! No! <laughs> Four wins? Really? I didn't even tell you. So, we, the waiter came over to the Outback Steakhouse table where we were sitting. Very nice. Had a great attitude. Said, like, can I get you guys some drink? I said, I'll have a bloke-sized IPA. He said, no problem, sir. Brought it over. Then he said, and this is a simple misunderstanding that happens all the time in communication, because communication is complicated, okay? He said, are you guys ready for food? And I said, I think we're good. He then said, oh, okay. And he took all the menus and started taking them away. And I understood what was happening. He thought I said, we're good, as in we don't want to eat. What I meant was we're good to order. I said, oh, actually, we will order some food. And his demeanor changed like it snapped. He was like, oh, and then like threw the menus back on the table. And then I was like awkwardly reading out like what everyone's going to have. And he was just silently writing it down. And I was like, <laughs> we did not get good service for the rest of the meal as well. But it is an airport outback steakhouse. So it's kind of like, what do you expect? I don't feel like I miscommunicated. I feel like when you say we're good in response to are you ready to order, the good means I'm affirming your question. Yes, we are good to order. If he had said, do you want any food? And I said, You're, we're good. Then he would be in the right. In my Language is complicated, okay? So I'm just saying... <laughs> If you ever find yourself in the Orlando airport, if you're at Terminal B, flying to Canada, maybe, or Puerto Vallarta, don't eat at that Outback Steakhouse, okay? It's one of the worst airports in America. Not my ass having a horrible time at the Orlando airport. Uh, for all the stuff that happened that has previously been covered in anecdotes, but then also, the first time when we arrived at the airport, it took us like, I didn't even talk about this one. We landed. You have to take a train from where you land to get the baggage claim. Who the fuck designed that? That's like my ass in Factorio. Why would you ever not have the baggage in the same building as where the airplane comes in? That is insane. We had to get on a train and take the train to another area where the bags were. Me and the plane were this far apart when we arrived at the airport. Anyway, then we get to the baggage carousel. The sign says, your flight, the bags are on carousel 29. I flew WestJet, okay? 
not to brag. When we get to Carousel 29, there's a very over it looking guy who says, in case you're just getting here, if you came in on WestJet, your bags are on 28. I said, oh, okay, thank you, sir, for your help. Not my ass sitting on Carousel 28 for like 25 minutes watching every bag come in. Departure airport, YYZ, 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 YYZ. I'm like, man, this is sure a lot of Toronto bags. I don't see any of my bags. I don't see anybody that's even on my flight, except I was talking to people and I was going, hey, where'd you guys come in from? And some of them were like, oh, I came in from Vancouver. This guy told us to come over here. I, after like 20 minutes, I said, fuck that. I go over to 29. I see like 100 people from our flight. They're just standing there. And I was like, oh, the guy said they're on 29. They said, yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. The dude is literally just out of here trolling. Like, you are getting paid to make the airport worse. You understand? I'm not one of those people that's like, you should be fired. But, like, you're actually, your presence here is actually making the airport worse financially and logistically. But it didn't even matter because that 25 minutes that we waited for our bags, who cares? Our bags weren't fucking out on 29 anyway. We had to wait, like, another 15 minutes for our four suitcases to come out. And then we finally get them, ah, oh, the hard part's over. Then we get in the Uber with the dude who's eating pistachios with one hand and then driving with the other hand and tailgating. And then people are honking at him and he's looking at me like, what's going on? And I'm like, you're the one driving the car, dude. But then I was like, what the hell is wrong with this airport? I look it up online, seventh best airport in the United States. Are you kidding me? I've been to some bad airports in the US, but like, that they must have paid somebody off because like let me just put it this way it doesn't hold a candle to pain field yeah, does it beat o'hare it probably beats o'hare okay but i was also stunned at disney world that there were not could just not because of the you know the thrill rides but just because of the temperature i was stunned that there weren't people like dropping dead like it's 36 degrees it feels like 45 is 99 percent humidity and uh, a water is $3.75. And there's no shade unless you want to go on the Little Mermaid ride for the 12th time. It's crazy that people were not dying. I didn't even see anybody pass out. I definitely did see some people that were like near passing out. But get to, I know how this sounds. I mean this in a complimentary fashion. I do think it's a testament to the American spirit. And I know maybe it's funnier that it's at Disney World instead of like, you know, at a place that's real. <laughs> I don't know, like <laughs> toiling in a, like a volcano or a mine or something like that. But I, I, I was proud of America when I was there. You know, they booked the vacation 11 months ago. They said it's gonna be hot. They said, oh, whatever, we'll just deal with it. And then it was the hottest like it's ever fucking been in Orlando. And they said, we're running it. We're run we, we booked this trip last year. This was our post-COVID trip as a family. We got matching shirts that say we're here for like my dad's 80th birthday. You're, suck it up. You're going to lose eight kilos of sweat by the time you make it out. We're staying at the Magic Kingdom for 13 hours. You're riding every single fucking ride while we're here. No offense, Europe. I feel like if that shit went down at Disneyland Paris, if it felt like 45 degrees Celsius, 99% humidity, it would have been record low attendance at the Magic Kingdom. You probably could have gotten on Remy's Parisian adventure. You could have looped it. Get off, get on, get off, get on. You wouldn't have had any competition. Avatar flight of passage ride, 180 minute standby line. The line stretching 17 miles serpentine behind you. Now we didn't see that because we had Genie Plus, but... That's what I heard. Regardless, they, they showed out, man. It's a testament to the American fortitude. I was laughing. We ate at a restaurant like um, it was Winnie the Pooh themed. I know you're going to laugh, but it's fucking Disney World. What do you expect? But then also, uh, the food at the Winnie the Pooh restaurant was fucking good, man. It was, surprising. it was just normal food. It wasn't just like all honey or anything like that. Crystal Palace. That's what I said when I said, you motherfuckers, how do you know so much about Disney? I only learned about this shit because I was there. Anyway, it was, the food was good. But I was laughing because they have the characters come to your uh, table, right? Winnie the Pooh comes to the table. No big deal. It's Winnie the Pooh. He's affable. 
He's social. He's a little dumb, but that's why we love him. Tigger comes to the table. He's silly. He's bouncing around. He's trying to communicate with like the mascot sign language because they're not allowed to talk, even though they talk in the fucking show. Uh, whatever. I'm not running the place, okay? Piglet comes over, does some belly laughs. The best, though, why they got Eeyore at the Winnie the Pooh restaurant coming around, man? The dude's defining trait is that he's depressed. If you made Eeyore do, like, he's walking around to every table and then, like, dancing and, like, posing for pictures and giving people hugs. If that shit happened on the show, this motherfucker would kill himself. He would be dead. I get that he's, like, your favorite character, but it's just, there's, like, a dissonance between the character as they are on the show and the character as they are in the restaurant. This is not in keeping with the character of Eeyore to be paraded around to every single table and walk in the damn honey march every 20 minutes, right? If any, they should have him in like a box or something. You could be like, that's Eeyore. And you'd be like, hey, Eeyore, can we take a photo? He'd be like, sure, I guess. Can't come up to every table and go like, I'm Eeyore. It doesn't make any damn sense. I did have, it's a real tweet, okay? It's a tweet that really happened. I did have four Coke Zeros with lunch on Thursday. Let me defend myself briefly. Free refills. It was, we were in the pool all morning. So I was fucking thirsty. And also, I didn't know this at the time, but I had a, a gestating sunburn, okay, on the top of my head. Now, I don't know about you, when I get a sunburn, one of the first symptoms of the sunburn, like before the red skin, is my body is like, you're thirsty as fuck, bro. So I just kept drinking the Coke Zeros. I didn't even go to the bathroom. I just had four, I, I no-sold four Coke Zeros, but the waitress, she was like, she was kind of pissing me off a little bit, man. Because she was like, after the second Coke Zero, she said, somebody is thirsty. And I was like, yeah, me, it's fucking hot outside. And then she was like, I'll get you another one. And I said, oh, thank you. And then she was like, sir, it's no problem. But she didn't say like, she, she said it like I was making like a, this is just a social cue, okay? I can't replicate her tone. But the tone, the communication between the lines was, it's an imposition. I shouldn't have to get you three Coke Zeros, but I'm going to get you your third Coke Zero. Then I was like, I had 30% of the third Coke Zero left. And she said, do you want another one? And I said, please don't, because if you bring it, I'm just going to drink it. And then she said, no way, sir. I got you. And she brought me another one. But it's like, I didn't want the other one. Because if she, as soon as she brought it, I just drank it. So what am I supposed to do? I got an 11-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 2-year-old with me. They take like an hour to eat a meal that's like this big. Of course, if you put a Coke Zero in front of me, I'm going to put like... Unleaded gasoline in a cup in front of me. I'll probably drink it out of boredom. So I had four Coke Zeros, yeah. But I do think that it's crazy to think about the fact that if I had... Okay, listen. If I had four beers at lunch at like 11.45 a.m., she probably would have thought to herself, like, what's wrong with this guy? But like, if it was 8 p.m. and you ordered four drinks, people would be like, that's not that abnormal. Well, you get four Coke Zeros, people are like, holy, co whoa, somebody's thirsty. Save some Coke Zero for the, you know, it doesn't make it, it's just liquid. What stroller do you own? DL Guiga, you're really making use of the, the VIP tag, huh? You really put it, putting it to work. I'm shopping right now. <laughs> I'm just, okay, I, we have... Well, now, see, now you've accidentally hit, like, a gold mine, and I'm going to get made fun of, okay? We have two strollers. So we got a stroller that we use for, you know, your day-to-day -day walking, if she needs a nap or something like that. And then we have a travel stroller that's a lot smaller, that's easier to take if we have to fly somewhere. Why don't you have one stroller? Because if we just got the comfort stroller... Well, you know what it fucking is? Um, the comfort stroller is fucking huge. It's like a Chrysler town and country, okay? So it's luxurious. It's an Opa Baby Vista. I don't want to brag. It gives you all the, it's got shock absorbers. It's got independent wheel alignment and piloting and stuff like that. The thing is, 
if we folded this shit up, we couldn't fit it in our trunk with all of our bags. So then we got another tiny stroller. I don't really remember the name of it, but that one we take with us. The Vista's nice. Why are you talking like you own like a stroller dealership? It's like the dude when I was, uh, I was walking in Vancouver and like a, a dude on the street, not a dude that was walking on the street, I mean a dude that was like laying on the street, said, hey, nice Opa Baby Vista. I guess you guys aren't planning on having another one. I was like, this, who do you think you are, man? I don't even know who you are. You're basically going like, you're, you're the, I don't even, I'm trying to think of a famous car salesman and I can't, but it's like the, the world's greatest stroller understander has logged on and then oh, he doesn't know, maybe I'm shooting blanks. Are you shooting blanks? I don't know. I'm not sending my come to the lab, you know, once a month. I wasn't shooting blanks three years ago, I'll tell you that much. Those were live rounds, hollow points. <laughs> Full metal jacket. I also, so Dan, I was telling this story um, that like we had a, a Lyft driver who got in a verbal confrontation with uh, another car at the parking lot well, or at the airport while we were getting out of his car. This is, I'm asking this question honestly. What percentage of Floridians do you think have a gun in their car? Because I was, I'm always on my best behavior, but I was definitely, especially outside of Disney World, I was aware of the fact that it's like, don't fuck with anyone. Cause they might kill you. But our, our Uber driver was just like, he was lighting this lady up and I was like, we're gonna be on the news, man. She's probably got a, like a CZ90 in her glove compartment or something like that. She might have a P90 in her glove compartment for all I know. Or like a FAMAS, I only know Counter-Strike guns. She might have a Reaper in there or a, an op. You watch the news too much? I don't watch the news, the news comes to me. As I don't turn on the news every day, just every once in a while on Twitter, you'll be like, tragic, Lyft driver gets entire family killed by just having no patience. Florida seems kind of crazy. I mean, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm really going off on Florida. People from Ohio are probably watching this right now like, yes, yes. But I always, whenever I talked about like my personal, this is not like a ranking of how valid they are, okay? It's just a ranking of like my perception of them. Whenever people were like rank the American states, I'm like, boom, California, New York, number one. Go ahead, boo me if you want to. Washington, Oregon, way up there. Throw in a Colorado or something like that. But then right below that, I would be like, Texas? Because at least it has its own, like I might not agree with everybody in Texas. It's got its own culture. It's got a great cuisine. It's got many big cities. It's got its own identity and stuff like that. And I said the same thing about Florida. I said Florida might not necessarily be for me, but it's got a world-class city in the form of Miami. Uh, it, it has the, uh, I'm not getting into it too. I was gonna say good economy, but I'm not trying to, you know, cause I don't know where it is in the economic rankings or whatever, but it's noteworthy. Like it's not like fucking Indiana, right? Like who knows anything about Indiana? The Colts play there and they do an auto race. Okay, you know, but like what is, what's the Indiana identity, right? Like if, if you met someone at the airport and you were like, where are you flying to? They're like, Indianapolis. You'd be like, oh, you have family there? They'd be like, nah. You'd be like, what, is, what the fuck is wrong? You're, you're vacationing in Indianapolis? No disrespect to people that are watching the stream from Indianapolis? I'm just, I just don't get it. But anyway, it might be great to live there. I don't know. I'm just saying to visit. So I had previously said that Florida is like, at least it's not just like a state. It's Florida. It's got oranges, it's got beaches, it's got Miami, good food and some. Then when I was in Orlando, I was like, I would rather live in Indiana than live in Orlando, straight up. Like our ass is up here, it's, it's borderline temperate most of the time, it's basically pleasant. And we're doing compost. Your ass is getting cooked down there in the swamp, you're not even recycling? Are you stupid?
To mo, to mo, to mo. I shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have said it. The big culture shock that I always, and it's very mundane, but the big culture shock that I have whenever I'm in the United States is that one in three people is wearing college football merchandise. It's sincerely, I know you're going to say like in Canada, isn't one in three people wearing like a shirt with the Montreal Canadiens logo on it? No. They're mostly wearing Hurley, <laughs> like me. <laughs> it's, it's a uniquely American phenomenon, man. Say OH in an Ohio airport and you'll be shocked. Or in an, in an airport in America and you'll be shocked. Oh, I already know about that. Like, you're going to laugh. I found out about that from the damn Disney cruise. I had no idea. I was just in a, in a room and somebody said OH and like 20 motherfuckers were like IO. It's like, you know, like, your ass is in like Puerto Vallarta right now. What are you doing? I'm from Ohio, we mostly hate that. All right, I'm just saying, listen, you owe it to yourself to go on a Disney cruise then. And if somebody says OH, you got to stand up and be like, I want you to know that I'm also from Ohio, but I am choosing not to engage in this. And then I would be like, that's the guy. Chat, you wouldn't believe it. There was this crazy dude on the ship with us. Holy cow. And for no reason, he got into a fight with a bunch of other people. All he had to do was say IO. I mean, come on. Hey, Tech923, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I would say like probably the craziest part about Ohio is that I don't even like know anything about it. But I definitely that doesn't stop me from talking about it. Like I just want the do people from Ohio know that nobody knows what the fuck a buckeye is? It's a buckeye state. This this state is shaped like a buckeye. What the fuck is a buckeye, bro? Please don't get them started. <laughs> it's a chestnut? It's a nut, you ass? I, with God as my witness, I did not know that. I bet 75% of chat plus had no idea that a buckeye was a, was a nut. I thought it was a bean. Listen, don't you have some OHs to IO to? Stop wasting my time. I don't know what I'm doing. I keep losing my train of thought because I'm talking too much. <laughs> and also, I don't have anything against Ohio anymore. I did before I went to Central Florida. I had something against Ohio when I had been to Miami. Because when I left Miami, I was like, I get it, but it's not for me. When I left Orlando, I was like, even if the plane crashes, at least we made it off the runway. That's all I could ask for. The parks... We're great. It's simply the normal parts of Orlando that were, <laughs> that were frightening. I was thinking, everybody knows this, okay? I, I'm, I'm, I'll, listen, I don't want to get in trouble here, okay? I get accused a lot of being a Disney adult, and I'm losing the ability to credibly run defense against that, okay? Because I'm going on the Disney cruises, I'm going to Disney parks, and I'm having fun. What I will say is I'm not walking around with like a Mickey Mouse tattoo or like I'm not an adult who's like, I got to take a picture with Gaston from Beauty and the Beast or something like that. Regardless, I was thinking about, and not, ad, not with admiration, but rather just with interest. How strong is the brand at Disney that Mickey Mouse has not done shit in a hundred years? And I saw at least 5,000 people with a tattoo of that motherfucker on their tricep. He doesn't, he hasn't been in any movies. He hasn't done anything. He's just simply a symbol of the company. And people were like, that one right there, I want it on my body forever. The brand, the Disney brand is so strong. Again, much like the fact that people weren't dying, it was like a testament to the American spirit. It feels like it, it's one of the few things remaining that unites America and even the world across demographics. You would see uh, people in like a MAGA 2024 hat, they'd be eating at a restaurant 
uh, across from somebody wearing like a pride backpack and they'd be smiling and waving at each other. You see people from all walks of life. You see the young, the old, the rich, the poor. It is very expensive though, but I don't know, maybe it's like a situation, they made it happen is all I'm trying to say. Everybody's there. They're all, and they're in line at Disney World. They're there at the park. They'll wait in line for 30 minutes to watch a movie about the motherfucker who made Disney World. When they're inside of Disney World, they will wait in line to watch a documentary feature about Walt Disney. The dude's been dead since like 1963. You could just catch it on YouTube. But they're like, that's how much they love Disney. It's, it's gotta be like one of the strongest brands on the planet, which is crazy. I, the, the Mickey Mouse thing is crazy to me. He doesn't do anything. I mean, I, if, you were, if you're 107 years old and you're like, I love Mickey Mouse, I'm like, I get it. When you saw that dude going like, that probably blew your mind. But if you're like 22 and you got a tattoo of Mickey Mouse, I'm sorry to say this to you, that company owns you. He hasn't done, if you got a tattoo of like a Pixar character, I get, at least it came out when you were like a kid. You got a tattoo of Mickey Mouse as someone born in like the year 2000? You're right, you're, you know what, you're right. You better be a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. But also I do wanna say I'm being judgmental, but I'm also not being judgmental. Because whatever's fun for you, go, go ahead and keep it up. I don't wanna yuck your yum. This is just one of those things where I'm like, but it's surprising, it's just surprising to me. It's rare there's an NL rant I completely agree with to this degree, thank you. Can I now maybe lose you or maybe bring you back? All that being said, the parks are like, um, they're a marvel of, of engineering and logistics. I can't fathom the amount of moving parts that are going on in, in any Disney World park. It's insanity. Like when you go to the airport, you know how hard it is for like 200 people to all be in the right place at the right time and sit in the seat that it says on the ticket? That's why they tell you to be at the airport three hours early is because like four people are going to fuck it up for everybody else. At Disney World, it's just fucking you. How many people? Um, five. Are you going to go two and three or are you going to go two, two, one? I fucking, I think we're going to go two and three. All right, three and four, three and four. Go, 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 go. They just... Hey, well, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away. Wait, we'll get to that later. Like, it just, it, it's so fast. It, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's an incredible logistics phenomenon. I can see why people are like obsessed with theme parks. Because there's no like naturally occurring theme park in the world, you know? Like you, that's, we, and by we, I mean our species fucking created that. It's like that, that tweet about uh, Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's like Coca-Cola is the best American invention. It's like a, a wonder of the world and civilization because it's like a man-made flavor that didn't exist in the wild. Like man had to reach into his own psyche and, and pull out fucking Coca-Cola. What do you think cola nuts are? Brother, this shit doesn't... We'll ask people what Coca-Cola tastes like. Mmm, tastes like a cola nut. OH. Come on. You, I know you can't help it. You might su submit. Submit. You know you can't stop it. You got Manchurian candidated at the football games, at the college football games. I know. You got... Do it. Come OH. OH. I owe. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. My new stereotype of Ohioans is that they know too much about nuts. <laughs> Apparently. No! I don't believe it. Believe it! Oh. I'm not buying a scorpion because it's getting sniped. This 10 pieces for you, librarian. I don't know what I'm doing. You know what? Run, run half squatted and then you don't need to worry about the order. It's that easy. And then you're going to give me something good next time I can tell. Hey, look at it. Remember when you met me in the gift shop at Disney? That was so cool, man. Thanks again. See? I'm not making it up. 
unless you heard, no, but I never mentioned the gift shop, so you can't be a false positive. You must be the real person. How was your birthday on Sunday? How was your birthday yesterday? Good luck when school starts. People think I don't remember. I remember. Please stop looking back at the script when doing a bit. Okay, okay, fine. Sorry. My mistake. Namaste. It was fantastic. We went back to Hollywood Studios and got more knickknacks. Hey, you mean the Hollywood Studios? The very same Hollywood Studios that I said was the best Disney park? I know a lot of people put some respect on the Magic Kingdom. I mean, what can you say about the Magic Kingdom? It's got all those classic Disney elements that you've come to know and love. But for me personally, I like the Star Wars land. I like the more modern rides. I think Hollywood Studios was really nice. There's your 10 piece, by the way. Did you watch any movies on the flight home? Okay, it's a, it's a recycled bit because, well, fuck you, it's not a bit, it's my life. But it's a recycled bit because I already talked about it. But after a week at a, an all ages themed amusement park, I definitely did watch Lady Bird and Rice Boy Sleeps on the flight home to experience some mature entertainment. And I uh, like bawled my eyes out through, through both of them for sure. Lady Bird is a great film. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anyone else think that uh, Lady Bird is Napoleon Dynamite? For people, you fucking, you can land this thing. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else think that Lady Bird is for people that fucking... I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anyone else think that Lady Bird is Napoleon Dynamite for people that grew up watching Hereditary instead of Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. I don't want to go off... I don't want to go off on a rant here, but... I can't fucking do it, man. I can't fucking do it. He's washed. That, I'll come back with that one tomorrow. That'll be the new I want to smoke the shit that made Calvin Coolidge. You know what was crazy about being at Disney World? There's a lot of people out there Still rocking, and God love them. Still rocking like Rick and Morty t shirts. And you might think that it's like I'm putting my face in my hands. Oh, brother, they don't know that show is cringe now. I'm actually envious of them. And I know that I could become them, but it's just not, it doesn't come naturally for me. But I'm envious of them because they aren't tapped into this fucking useless, ever-changing zeitgeist every single day. Like, they went to a store and saw a shirt, and they said, oh, Rick and Morty, I like that show. That's pretty funny. So they bought the shirt, and they fucking wear the shirt, and they're out there living their damn lives. They're not enslaved by the same chains that those of us who have chosen, whether willfully or via inertia, to... Keep your finger on the pulse of every how the entire world feels about every single media property, every single person involved in the media property, the political opinions of absolutely everybody on the writing staff. Did anybody, did one of the voice actors committed a crime in Galway in 1979, so I'm never watching Big City Greens ever again. Like, they're just out there buying shirts and living their lives, man. That could be us. But for some reason, I resist. I say, I, it would be so easy for that to become me. And instead, I'm like, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. I repel, I, re, I repulsed. I back away from the medicine. I say, I don't need this. Are they, though? Who's they? I'm talking about me, man. Not Mima. That's like one of the lead characters from Where the Crawdads Sing. But the dude who fucking wrote... Where the crawdads sing, isn't he like a Republican congressman or something like that? And then we don't even know if he made up half the shit in the book. And then we don't, I, I've never even read the book. I don't know the guy. I've never seen the movie. I know everything about it. Where did we go wrong, man? That's hillbilly elegy. Oh, okay. I was kind of wrong then. Never mind. Oh, that's right. Where the crawdads sing is the lady whose husband might have killed somebody on an African safari in the late 1980s. <laughs> You see how messed up? We're not supposed to know this much, man. 
We're just supposed to be watching a show and going, that's funny, and then six months later, you're in a store and you're like, I liked the two episodes of that show that I watched. I'm going to buy that Rick and Morty shirt. Honestly, for the most part, the people that we met at Disney World, I had sympathy, you know? Like, sometimes I get in their way. I've got a... I've got a stroller with me and I got two younger kids like they're not paying attention to everything they're bumping into people now and then I say sorry it's no harm no foul I try to extend that sympathy to others as well I mean when there's kids who are like you know inconveniencing you if if I can be accused of being boomer coded then I'm going to accuse you of being millennial coded or or even gen z coded maybe I'm a boomer I get way more annoyed when I I'm inconvenienced by an adult than when I'm inconvenienced by a child because a child, their brain doesn't really work right yet. So like, when a little kid bumps into me and then they say sorry, I'm like, there's absolutely no problem. Now, if they're like 12, I might be like, you better sort that shit out real quick because not everybody's as nice as I am. But when it's like an adult that's, you know, they have a dereliction of duty, I'm like, you're supposed to be the responsible one. I will say we had a funny moment, like we were on the monorail and I was just, I was sitting in my seat like wedged up against the wall. It was re real tight. I had um, my niece next to me and then Kate, my daughter and my other niece were like across because we couldn't get seats together. We stopped at another place, uh, like another resort. And then a little kid and his family got on and the kid just walked up to me. He was probably like seven and he pointed at me and said, I sit there and I just sort of looked at him. He didn't say like, can I sit there? Or like, do you mind moving so I could sit there? He just said, I sit there. And I was just like, uh, what's going on? And then his mom was like, no, you can't sit there. Come sit with us. And he was like, no, they can move over there and I can sit here. And then the mom was like, no, just come sit with us. And then he screamed, and then his mom went off on him in Polish and took them off of the monorail. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> it isn't. You can't, they might have been at, the, at Disney World for like six days. You can't be pulling that kind of stuff on day six. On day one, you might be able to be like, ha ha, no, just come sit on my lap. On day six, it's like, you know how hard it is to get everybody in line to get on the fucking monorail and then you're going to blow it all up by trying to steal that guy's seat. We need more of that? Well, I mean, I think it's like, you know, people don't need to be meaner to their kids, but it was nice to see someone kind of laying down the chain of command. Although the flip side of that was there's so many times when like my daughter would be taking a nap. So I would just be hanging out, you know, with her in the shade. And then you'd see like a dad with the, you know what, I, when I say this, you know what I mean. A dad with a big backpack on and he's got the waistband buckled too. And he's got sunglasses on, you know what I'm talking about? And the dad would be like browbeating his son. I told you 20 times. If you ever did that again, we're gonna leave. And then the kid would be like, but, 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 he'd be like, no buts! We're getting out of here right now. And then I'd grab the kid by the elbow. You see the picture of the guy at Disneyland where his shirt says like, if I charge in, follow me. If I retreat, kill me. If I die, avenge me. Someone tweeted that to me while I was at Disney World and I was laughing my ass off. It's such a good shirt. I can't imagine where you gotta be psychologically to wear that shirt to fucking Disneyland, man. It's so good. The question is, if you kill him because he retreated, do you still have to avenge him? You know, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. When I was on the monorail, a guy got in a fight with my dad who was disabled because he was sitting while his wife had to stand. Opened with, when you leave the park, you should buy a dictionary and look up the word respect. Holy cow, man. You're on the damn train at Disney World. Everyone's got to relax a little bit. I do want to say, like, ev almost everybody we saw was having a good time. But there were definitely some people where you were like, they're not having a good time. I think, like, the stress can get to anybody, but, like... I think there were some people. 
that kind of, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say they went looking for a conflict. I would say that their base case maybe is that they always sort of look for conflict. It's not like they rolled up to Disney World and were like, let's fight. It's just like, for whatever reason, they are conditioned to look for a fight everywhere. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> you know what's crazy? You can at here's how crazy Disney World is. I'll give you an example. You literally can't do anything. I think if you did something like criminal, they would kill you and then place the body outside of the park grounds so that it would look like you died outside of their jurisdiction so that they didn't have to like file a safety report. That being said, within reason, you're paying money to be there and be treated like a VIP. They literally can't get mad at you for anything, which is insane. One day, we were late for a reservation for an hour for lunch. An hour! We were supposed to be there at like 1.10. We got there at 2. People in front of us, in line to speak to the host, said, hey, we're wondering if you have a table for two. They said it's going to be about a 45-minute wait. Is that okay? They said, yeah, no problem. We'll just hang out. We walked up. Hey, our reservation was like an hour ago. Um... Can we still get in? They said, no problem. We're just wiping down your table. Now, I know that you were not wiping down that. I know that you're probably, you radioed someone and said they're finally here. And they were like, oh, fuck. Like, get it, get, figure something out. But they, they, they treat you different, man. It's crazy. It's, it, this is a weird bit, but bear with me. I was just away in a fake real world for like a week, right? I'm 0% high or under the influence of any kind of substance right now, except possibly caffeine. It's fucking dawning on me how surreal it is. And I'm talking right now. And there's like a few thousand people that are like watching and talking back. That's so divorced from the reality that I was in over the past week. Like this is a kind of whiplash that would have killed a lesser man. To go from like... Commuting to the airport, I guess it's not commuting, but driving to the airport, then like being at Disney World, which is just sensory overload, to then like, oh yes, I'm going back to my normal job right now, which is just talking for five hours straight and strangers give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Like this is something that is not, when you're in the bubble of doing it, you're like, it's normal. Having been out of it for like nine or ten days, this shit is the fucking twilight zone, man. What's going on? What are you doing here? What am I doing here? This isn't real. We're not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. What are you doing? You're not doing anything. What are we doing here? This is crazy. Did your Trump impression make it to Orlando? Well, so here's the story with that. I think we were talking about, Chibli came up for some reason, as he often does, and then either Kate or myself went, Chibli, Chibli, and then my two nieces said, whoa, what was that? That's the coolest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. What's, what's this Chibli thing you guys are doing? And we were like, oh, Chibli is like a friend of ours who lives in New Zealand, and we, we just, it's the only thing I can say in my Donald Trump voice. And then they just started going, Chibli, Chibli, along with us. So we cut that shit out because we can't let that make it back across the border with them. And then they're going to have to explain it to their parents or to like, you know, their teacher or something like that. The same thing happened like a, while I was riding Rise of the Resistance, the four of them were chilling in the gift shop. And then um, apparently my daughter, who is two, pointed at a, a figurine and said, I want that. And then it was Babu Frick. And then Kate like said, you don't even know who this guy is. His name is Babu Frick. What a name. And then they just started shouting like Babu Frick at each other. So we had to make it a, a banned word. But that took like two days. Who's Babu Frick? He's, does, I haven't seen all of the newest Star Wars. Isn't he just a guy who goes, <laughs> or something like that? He goes, hey, hey. He does not go, hey, hey. What does this even mean? <laughs> the tiny guy who bricks C-3PO? 
isn't being bricked up when you're either constipated or horny, depending on the context. He didn't brick him up. He just bricked him. Like, a, like the way you brick like a, a computer. He kills C-3PO? That dude was my tour guide on Star Tours. Mine too? Bro, fucking no way. <laughs> I don't know if other people are like this because I'm not that roller coaster pilled. Anytime I got on a roller coaster, because at Disney World, they don't ask you to like take off your glasses or like your hat or your you know, bag or anything like that. I would like put all this stuff under my shoes and then just clamp my feet down as hard as possible on top of them so that they didn't fly out of the ride. So I was like, maybe that's one of the reasons that I didn't like roller coasters that much before is because I'm always distracted by like, oh, what if my bag falls out of the coaster? Your glasses? When I rode the bat at Canada's Wonderland in the 12th grade, it's a roller coaster that takes you through a loop and then you go backwards through the same loop. On the first loop, my glasses fell off of my head and I had to catch them. And then I had to go through the second loop with just holding my glasses out in front of my face, like hoping that they wouldn't fall off, otherwise I couldn't see anything. That story was my ick. Yeah, I can understand it. I can't really be mad at you for that one. <laughs> you caught your glasses on a loop? I hate when something amazing happens to me because People don't believe it, because I'm not, I don't present as being that cool. But I'm like a pretty fucking cool dude. And it would surprise you, I'm fairly coordinated. Yes, I fall down now and then, I stumble now and then, but I'm pretty coordinated. I played baseball for 10 years. It wasn't, you know, travel ball, but it was still like, you know, I was doing pretty well, I'd, I'd say. Don't snipe me. Oh, you're in trouble. Tiger would be sick though. Oh, we're still gonna lose. <laughs> yep, here it comes. Tiger would have been good on this team. I don't know why, like obviously you're talking about the animal. Tiger? But I thought you were talking about Tiger Woods for some reason. No, his defining... You need to have more empathy, man. His defining characteristic as a golfer is not his pain pills addiction. Okay? that's We should have sympathy for that, man. There but for the grace of God go us, you know? Any one of us could have been cursed with being like at the forefront of uh, sports entertainment and then also addicted to pills or something. I'm just trying to say he's still a human being. We shouldn't, you know, make fun of him. His bad driving? He was under the influence of the pain pills! Why don't you have sympathy for Jordan Peterson's benzo addiction then? Well, I have sympathy for his benzo addiction, I guess, but I mean, it's also like he chooses to go outside dressed like the fucking Joker, okay? Like, I, you can... I'm not saying you have to absolve all bad behavior that they're involved in. I'm just saying, you know, you don't have to... There's other things you can poke fun at Tiger Woods for. Like the texts that he sent when he was cheating on his wife. <laughs> Which were... I'm not trying to, again, you know, like, issue a personal attack on Tiger Woods, but those texts are really, really funny. Like, they're really, really funny. Wasn't his wife abusive? No, she was Swedish. Playing sap with 11 minutes on the clock. I got one more in me. So true. My entire gallery on my phone now, like my photos folder. I don't know what you call it on an iPhone. I'm an Android Andy. It's, it's all NBA related memes. Well, and pictures of like my kid at Disney World. But like, let me see. Here, I, this, I, all I can say to you is the honest truth. Okay, here's, here's my most recent photos. Uh, Galarian Articuno... Catch card. We came back. Tomo was sitting in our sink. I said, I need a photo of that one. Me walking 26,268 steps at Disney Hollywood Studios for a total daily walk of 20.17 kilometers, 1,063 calories. Mike Ehrman Trout looking 
not amused. Okay, now Disney World, Disney World, Disney World, bag of rocks, nine ninety nine. Here we are on the airplane. Hang on, you know what? I have to get it from Twitter. I'm old. Let me look at my gallery. Uh, Joe Biden in the Iron Man suit, like it's Joe Biden's face with the Jarvis uh, computer stuff over, over his face. Because I believe that he tweeted, Congress, pass my billionaire tax. I, I haven't used that one yet, but one day I will. It's just stolen. Like I didn't make it. Um, Greg Popovich saying, shush. Lionel Messi, I don't care. LeBron James, whoever came up with that shit needs to be fired. Um, Kyrie Irving, I have no idea. I just work here at the end of the day. LeBron James, I don't give a fuck what nobody think. I'm him. I don't even know who this guy is. A masterpiece. I don't have too many words. I believe this is Pep Guardiola. I need that. We need that. Uh... Guy who sank his first three-pointer ever. Tonight, I feel like I lost my virginity. LeBron James, they fucked up mentally and physically. I'm telling you, they fucked up. Lil Wayne speaking about Nikola Jokic's performance in Game 4 of the NBA Finals. I ain't ever seen no shit like that. Michael from Love on the Spectrum. I have a feeling that having children will ruin my chances of becoming wealthy. That was just an all-time quote. I had to go search that one out for myself. Walter the Grumpy Puppet from Jeff Dunham's uh, comedy special. LeBron James saying, yeah, I'm obsessed with it. I mean, like, this, this is a brain in decline, okay? <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is a man who is... I mean, it's not getting any better up here. The Rudy Gobert one. I like my, my favorite. I, I try not to use it too much, though, because it'll get played out. Is Victor Wembayama after his first game in the G League. To be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. You know what's messed up? I don't... This is... You have to keep your brain in check. I don't watch basketball. I don't follow basketball. But I was thinking to myself the other day. I said, maybe I should buy some basketball cards. What I I had to stop myself just because like I was like brain. What are you doing? You don't watch basketball. You don't even like collecting cards. Why did you just get an impulse to purchase some basketball cards? Like I don't even know where it came from. I couldn't even tell you. The dad urge to have a card collection. I was like I constructed like an elaborate fucking fantasy in my head. I was like, I could buy a few packs of basketball cards, and then if I get like a, any good cards, I could maybe keep them myself and add them to the collection, but then I'll take all the bulk and I'll donate it to like the local community center or something like that, so the kids who uh, don't have basketball cards can get their favorite player or something. Yeah, like their favorite player is going to be like the eighth person that comes off the bench for the Washington Wizards that I'm going to leave in the bulk pile. Yeah, for sure. Guaranteed. They're not going to want the, the Victor Wembayama rookie card. They're going to be like, give me, <laughs> give me the Tony Snell. Is there like a governing body mm, that <laughs> makes sure Upper Deck doesn't print too many Victor Wembayama rookie cards? The card council. <laughs> Why would they purposefully increase their own supply? Well, like, I don't want to buy a basketball card pack that doesn't have Victor Wembayama in it. So if they just, like, put a Wembayama in every single card pack, then, like, I'd probably buy a couple. Because I'd be like, holy cow, these are going to be worth a lot of money someday. But then they would have printed so many Victor Wembayama rookie cards that they would have been, like, they, they'd be, like, worth nothing as a result of the oversupply. That's what I'm saying, like, the... The, not to be economics pilled, <clears throat> if you show me the incentives, I'll show you the results. And the incentive is for Upper Deck to print a fuckload of Victor Wembanyama rookie cards because they would like make a lot of money and it would like totally fuck up the secondary market, which apparently I'm pretending to be a part of for some reason. Oh yeah, we win these. Here's a good, the mechanics of, of trading cards is very interesting to me. Do they print the same number of cards for like every 
Uh, let's see the, the top five picks in the NBA draft. Do they print the same number of cards for all five of those rookies? Or is there like a, an actuary in, at upper deck that's like, personally, we think that the Spurs reached. Obviously, they didn't. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> do they print the same number of rookie cards for pick number one as pick number five? Or do they print more of pick number one because that's going to be like the chase rare? Or do they print less of pick number one because it would make it worth more money, which might lead to people buying more packs? My dad used to be head of the card council. They just kind of do whatever. I used to smoke weed with Johnny Hopkins. Stop shooting me! Don't they just print a fuck ton of everything? I don't think so. I think because the, the dirty little secret of the card industry is like the only people who buy sports cards because they like sports are like eight years old. And everybody else that buys sports cards is basically just addicted to gambling. And the way that you get gambling addicts to purchase your product is to advertise like, oh, check out like this huge rare that you could get out of this one. Ruby, Sapphire, Victor Wenbanyama, security slapping Britney Spears at the Luxor, right? Like that's how you, that's how you get people invested in that one. That's all trading card games. Chad, I got a bone to pick with you as well. Because I don't know how it happened, but you got my wife in the Honkei Star Rail. I watched her play a little bit of the game. First off, she said, you can't get into this game as well because we, uh, if both of us get addicted to it, then we won't have any money. And I said, all right, that's fine. I said, I don't think there's much danger of that. Then I watched her do like a, a pull, which is what they call it when you receive a new member of your Star Rail team. And she pulled like a unit. I don't know what the fuck's going on, okay? She pulled a unit that was called like Nessun Dorma or something like that. And then she was going through her inventory and it was like Badge of Chaos, Gallifrey and Steel, Stardust Comet and stuff like we, You know what we need? And I'm saying this half ironically, but half unironically. We needed an American boomer gotcha game. Because I, I'm not saying I want to get into gotcha, but on the other hand, I'm kind of wondering what all the fuss is about, but I can't wrap my head around all this like, hey, it's anime ladies, but also it's like European medieval coded or something like that. What about like you just open a pack and it's like, holy shit, I got like Bill. That's Bill. And then there's a, oh, I got a gun. I got a sword. Why is it all like the, the falchion of alacrity and stuff like that? I can't follow that stuff. How am I supposed to know? But if they put like a, you know, I got a five-star Cletus. Who's Cletus? Bro, he's like a systems analyst. He's the best systems analyst in the game right now. Usually people build him as a systems analyst, but if you get him a, a TI-85 scientific calculator, he can also be a great project manager if you need someone to play a flex role on your team. You know what? Someone also said that's just fantasy football, and I think I get it now. I think you're also right. <laughs> I mean it sincerely. Today's stream is dedicated to people who have three plus children. Mm, I'm going to say between three and four children. Because if you have five... At the very least, you knew what you were getting into. Like, I can see you have one, and you're like, this is pretty good. And then you have two, and you're like, eh, still, oh, maybe we could stretch for one more. And then you're like, hold, hold. But if you had four, and then you're like, run it back. Come on. Save some earth for the rest of us. But like, it's crazy. You'll be like looking after my toddler who needs like a lot of attention. And then like my wife is trying to like figure out what we're going to do for lunch. And then like my 11 year old and my eight year old niece are like just hitting there with questions. They're like, what's that statue made of? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what the Nemo and Dory statue is made of in the queuing area for the Finding Nemo ride at Hollywood, at Epcot, okay? I don't know! Anyway, I think she's already streaming, so I'm going to send you over there. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you tomorrow.
and then I'll sit here for eight seconds silently. I can't do that. I don't know if Ryan told you. I told Ryan to get a vasectomy after interacted with uh, our nieces. I love them, like I said. I love them. But, oh my god, they love me too much! They love me too much. I'm so, I can't, I can't, I will not have second child. I will definitely not have third. I can tell you that much. I'm like fucking, holy. You know, the first thing I said as, as soon as we got back and my nieces went home, I said, I'm fucking free. I'm fucking free. Yeah. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Ooh. Like, oh. I like screamed. I did. I did. I'm not lying. Oh my god, they love me too much. Like, oh, dude. Like you know how like they advertise speakers dual sound. You know, like left speaker, right speaker, stereo sign, whatever. It was literally happening twenty four seven. One oldest always on my left ear. Youngest. Always on my right ear. Wah, wah, wah. Auntie, 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 what is this? Auntie, Auntie, why is it like that? Auntie, what is Epcot? Why is it called Epcot? What does Epcot stand for? What does it mean? I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to know why it's called Epcot? What are you fucking Googling? You have your cell phone. Wait, what? Then you're like, Auntie, what are, when are we eating dinner? Auntie, when was the dinner again? Auntie, what do we do before dinner? Auntie, what do we do after dinner? What do we do after this ride? What's our plan? Do and then they weren't taking turns. They weren't taking turns. They were saying at the same time. And then just like I'm fucking dying, fucking dying. And then my daughter goes like, I want mommy. I'm like, oh Luna, I'm so sorry. I'm just like getting attacked. I understand. They love me. They love me so much. They want my attention. I understand. And then like, oh, in Disney World, whenever we're walking, I want to like fucking walk fast to get to the place so we can get on the ride, right? But my <laughs> nieces were always walking. Like I had my wings spread, basically. Oldest on my left, youngest on my right. Every, every time I'm walking, they're like, they're not walking straight, per like parallel together. They, they're like always trying to like walk into my feet, but they're always on my side. And I'm just like, girls, can you stop? I just want to walk. Can you like walk behind me? Walk behind me. Walk behind me. And I said that. And then they're like, okay, okay. But then they walk behind me for one second. They return to their original position and they go like, okay, okay, my, 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 okay, what is that? Okay, 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 okay. I'm just like, I was like literally getting zapped. And that was eight days. I think I actually gained wrinkles. I got, I think I like, no joke. It might be the sun, but I look older. Like fucking like grandma. I freaking, I bet, I bet I'm growing white hair. I, I haven't looked. I don't want to look, but my God. And then, so like it went kind of bad. I just kind of like drawing my patient, but I never like snapped or anything. And then my nieces, they were having FaceTime with my sister. And I said, ha ha ha, by the way, um, your daughter loved me so much. Um, they're constantly like talking to me in both ears. Stereo sound, literally. Auntie Kate, left ear. Auntie Kate, right ear. Mah, 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 mah. It's kind of crazy. Ha ha ha. And then my sister goes like, oh, you're going to miss it. You should have a second kid. Then you know how good you have it. And I said, what? What do you mean? That's literally not what I meant. I don't mean like I love the stereo sign or the stereo sound happening. I I was complaining and then my sister's like, well, it's time. She, she, oh, every time I talk to her, she always tell me to have a second kid. And then you know what? So, oh my God. Oh, okay. Okay. Focus on the story. And then my sister is like, when they, at the end of the trip, when they leave you, um, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the... You're gonna miss all this. Oh, thank you very much, Auntie Anonymous. Kate. My sister said you're gonna miss it. You know, I, I, right now it might sound a little annoying, but you're gonna miss the sound. Cause like when they're gone, you know, you cannot stand the silence. So like you will miss it. And I said, I don't fucking think so. In my mind, I said, okay, okay. I said, okay, okay. In my mind, I said, I don't fucking think so. And then here I am in my silence. 
both Raya and I, we went, Ooh. oh my God, we can use the silence so loud. And I was like, right? And then Ryan was like, we can't have second kid or third. And I'm like, I agree. I agree. Just fucking, fucking get, get snip snap, dude. I, I can't, we cannot chance it. Oh my God. I don't know why she's constantly messaging me and going like, oh, when are you, when are you having second kid? Oh my gosh, your Luna is so cute. You gotta have second, you know, siblings are better. And I'm like, oh, is the sibling really better? Is sibling really better? Then why are we so fucked up? You know what I'm saying? Like, if the, if the sibling is good, then we're like, you and I, we should be good. But you and I, were not good. I didn't say that, but that's what I was thinking. But... I honestly personally think siblings are not better. People say uh, single child, crazy child, you know, single ch child is always crazy. Nah, dude, fucking siblings are insane. You guys just don't understand. Siblings are fucked up. They're just fucked up on their own each way and they eat each other and they fucking fight and they fucking like, they freaking strangle. Like, oh, like that's just, it's not good. But it's like single child, you know, you, I honestly think sing single child is better. I'm sure there are, there are people, you know, everyone's different. There are some people who really like that kind of live, lively, you know, if, if you were to put it in a very, very good way, it's live, lively, right? There's constant noise, like, ha, 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 and then like, oh, but then like they start to fight in the line while we're, while we're waiting for a ride, they start to fight each other and then they start to do this, some like dumb shit, like who kicks other person's feet first or something like i don't know what it is they were like like who am like am i gonna step on your feet before you step on mine kind of game and i was like girls stop it stop stop you guys are kicking each other stop and then i would look away and then one of the kid will like step on their step on the other kid's foot and then they start doing it again i'm just like can you break it up stop I'm, if you keep doing this, I'm, we're going back to hotel. We're, we're not doing this. And they're like, but like, she started it. And what's crazy is that my nieces are actually, it only happened once and only lasted 10 minutes. And I'm pretty sure around their age, um, that is like very good behavior. <laughs> like, like much, much worse happens um, in, in, I think, normal family. So my nieces, they're like better than average for sure, by far. But like, I could not, I could not handle it. I could not handle it. It was so annoying. Ah. I'm, I'm not, we're not, we're not having second kid. I feel like I know Luna is so cute. And just, you know, if she is so cute, why not have a second cute thing? More, more cute better but i'm like nah dude that that mindset has left nothing wrong with just one kid i know i'm fine with the one kid and then we were like just to make sure we're like luna do you want a sibling and then she's like no <laughs> do you want a younger sister no do you want a younger brother no okay we're good both three 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 people in the household all voted no okay all clear. <laughs> no one, no one said yes. Ryan said, Ryan said no. I said no. My daughter said no. Only one who's saying yes is my sister, which is kind of stupid. Cause like, is she going to raise the baby? Nah, I don't think so. I think when, when Ryan, when Ryan's sleep, maybe I can punch his balls. Maybe that's, that will, that will do it. Um, what is it? My libido's gone berserk. I don't wanna go to work. I don't want nothing to eat. Driving up and down the street, but only two weeks ago, two, three, you said you'd never leave me. Two, three, four, but here I am alone. One, two, then in this world of reckless happenstance, why do good things have to go away? Two, three, and leave you with nothing. Two, three, four, and she left me with nothing. If you know the words, sing along. Ah. You ever listen to Prozac, man? That was a song, dude.